Hey guys, welcome to this next lecture in the lighting setup for this course. Uh, we're going to go over point lamps in this section. So uh, let's go ahead and add a lamp. We are back at the default scene with this, uh, this fire hydrant. I'm going to add point lamp in. Again, it's going to put it at the origin, so I'm going to move this up. And uh, let's do what we always do. Let's pop in and render it without changing anything. So this is what you're going to get. Now, point lamps occupy a single point in space, and then they emit light rays in all directions uh, from that point. So most lamps with a bulb are great examples of a point lamp, and the simplest example being your common household light bulb that fits into your living room fan or lamps that are sitting on your coffee table. So up until now, we've talked about lights that, that they naturally exist within our environments. Uh, point lamps, along with the spot and area lamps, which we'll cover next, are usually only found in man-made lights. And because of this, the characteristics of the lights and their shadows that they cast change. So let's get into the point lamp. So as you can see, uh, lighting is pretty harsh right now. We've got an overhead light directly coming from above, hitting all the areas that are pointed to the, the top of our, our scene, and they're being illuminated, and then everything under those with uh, really sharp fall off are being completely cast in black. Um, now again, there's no cast shadows here yet. We gotta turn those on, but as you can see, everything that's under something is uh, pretty much left with, uh, with all black shading. All right, let's get into the settings for the point lamp. So right away, you see we've got the same settings that you're used to here for the other lamps we've talked about. We've got color and we've got energy. So if we change the color, make it something a little more yellow, like we're used to seeing from a, from a light bulb. Um, gonna quickly get that. Let's go a little more orange. Okay, so we get energy set to one. And uh, again, you see your specular and diffuse settings, so you can turn those off or on as you need to. Um, all right, let's talk about fall off. The fall off is a great example of how we can affect how far this light affects things within the scene. So you gotta remember, sun lamps and hemisphere lamps, they're almost infinite. You know, based on when they hit the earth at a certain time, uh, we get a certain amount of light, but, but those lights don't change intensity. Uh, our perspective changes intensity of how those lights affect us. So it's not the same with man-made lights. Man-made lights are different intensities. And because of that, they can't light everything. They have a certain amount of light they can reach to uh, with, uh, within a scene, and then they just stop working. They fall off. So uh, let's, let's talk about this. Distance is basically what you're going to use to change how far the lamp can affect things in the scene. So if I crank this down, and we re-render, you can already see this is getting a lot dimmer. And I'm, I'm not changing the energy. The energy output is the same. It's how far does the, uh, the lamp affect things. And that's what I'm changing. So, uh, you know, if you get a really powerful light, uh, even if you crank this up to three, and you render, you're gonna get nice bright lights, but then you're gonna have a fall off that's pretty harsh um, with other stuff in the scene. And this is really made a lot more apparent um, when you have stuff that fills the scene and you can really get a feel for you know how far a light is going so um let's turn this back to something lower change this back to one okay there we go let's change this up a little bit all right so that's pretty decent so let's talk about uh a little bit about shadowing with the uh the point lamp so if we click on ray shadow you're gonna see pretty much the same settings that we saw before for the sun lamp. The difference is gonna be how those uh, shadows are actually cast. So I'm gonna change this to something a little brighter like we did before, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and render and let's see what happens. Okay, now remember this light is directly above us, and so right now we're getting a uh, pretty you know, harsh fall off here with the shadows, and uh, we're definitely getting cast shadows, but they're, they're pretty harsh. And um, so let's do this. Let's uh, crank the samples up to at least six. Re-render. It's going to give us a little bit more realistic blur on the light here. And then uh, let's change the soft size up to, I don't know, one and see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, we're getting a lot of really nice blur here, but it's got a lot of noise because we're using a low sample rate.
Now, point lights, unlike sunlights and hemi lights, it matters where you put them in the scene. So if I put this over here and re-render, you can see that drastically changes what we're looking at here. Um, and automatically, it kind of looks a lot better. So uh, so let's, let's look at some of these settings here. Now, we, we talked about upping this a little bit. That's not going to do much, uh, but it will change some of the characteristics of things in here. So if you want to get more illumination, you got to change the angle or the placement of the light and then uh, where it's at. Now, you're not going to really have um, rotation with a point lamp. Like I said, it, it occupies a single point in space, and it's like a light bulb. Even if you rotate a light bulb, you, I mean, what are you doing? You're not going to get uh, any changes, really, within the scene. So really, with a point light, it just matters where you put that. And if I put it right here on the ground and uh, move it over, let's put it, like, right here, and then render... You can see it's almost like we've just thrown a light bulb onto the ground and it's thrown it up and, and it looks exactly it's like a lamp has fallen over or something right here. Um, there's the fall off I'm talking about. See this lamp only goes out to here and then everything fades into shadow. So perfect example of what I'm talking about. Um, let's up this to 12 and again we'll take this back down a little bit. Get some more harsh shadows in there and a little bit of a different feel. Uh, let's change this to another color. Give it more of a warm, warm fill for that shadow. And uh, as you can see, instead of these being perfect black cast shadows now, we've got a little bit of a warm tint to uh, some of these areas. Now that's like really unrealistic. So what you'd wanna do is take out a lot of that saturation and leave it sort of towards the white in the middle to kind of complement what you have got going on here. So you really want this color a little darker um, and you can go more or less saturated depending on the kind of mood you want to set up for your scene. But uh, that's pretty much it for point lights. That's kind of how they work. And uh, if you're looking for something that's, you know, a lot like a light bulb or a lamp, um, then this is what I would use because it's, uh, it's really good at that. And the shadows, depending on the mooding that you're going after, they're just beautiful. So um, in the next lecture, I'm going to cover settings for the spot lamp. And we're going to talk about how to get some different moods uh, with that light. So I'll see you there.